Gaming has always been an expensive pastime, but recently some games companies have started to take the piss. As an entry point, you're going to have to fork out over £200 for your console or consoles of choice. Eventually, you'll succumb to this new HD world of ours and spend over two or three times that for a brand new shiny television. And a HDMI cable, a wireless adapter, or maybe a Bluetooth headset, a bigger hard drive, it all starts to add up. If you're lucky enough to have mates, then it's an extra 40 quid for them to play. Then you've got games anywhere between 10 and 60 quid, a fucking top hat for your avatar thing to wear, your very own plastic band. And then there's the dinners and flowers you'll have to buy your neglected partner, the monthly subscription to World of Warcraft to help you escape your bullshit relationship. And inevitably the cardboard boxes need to pack up all your stuff when she tells you to fuck off. All of this clearly isn't enough for some publishers, so they've created a brand new way to get your hard-earned cash. DLC, or downloadable content. Now, post-release content is nothing new. You've probably bought your fair share of expansion packs over the years. But with the advent of digital distribution, publishers can now bypass the expense of packaging and shipping disc-based expansion packs to be sold in shops all around the world. What this means is that they no longer have to create these large expansion packs to justify the cost of worldwide distribution. The end result is content that's smaller that can be charged at any price that they want. On March 30th, Activision released the Stimulus Package for Modern Warfare 2, a game that's already made them well over $1 billion. The pack contains five multiplayer maps for the low, low price of 1,200 Microsoft fake monies, which is basically about a tenner. When you consider that two of the maps have been lifted wholesale from Call of Duty 4, that's £3.33 pence for each map. At the risk of sounding like an old fuddy-duddy, multiplayer maps were cheaper in my day. In fact, free for the most part, you couldn't pick up a magazine without having 200 free Quake levels or the top 50 Half-Life mods crammed onto the cover disc. Supporting your customers is sadly going out of fashion, and even well-meaning games companies like Valve and Epic Games can't escape that. Since you can't install expansion packs or mods onto a console, gamers are forced to download them through the network. And as many console manufacturers won't allow you to use their network without charging the end user, you see otherwise free content costing more on consoles. Valve's recent Left 4 Dead 2 expansion pack, The Passing, is 560 Microsoft points for 360 owners, but it's completely free to download if you bought the game on PC. Some say that games cost more to make nowadays because modern gamers are far more discerning. And it's a fair point, some of your old Mega Drive games would freeze randomly for no reason, but if Gears of War 3's chainsaw is too unbalanced, you can guarantee it will be a trending topic on Twitter within minutes. In fact, modern games have to tick any number of boxes before we'll even consider playing them. They need sexy looking graphics, multiplayer with zero lag, an engrossing storyline, some decent voice acting, realistic physics, skateboards, child minding, throwable Koreans. So the argument is that by cramming all of this additional content into a game, production costs inevitably rise, and DLC is just another way of helping to foot that bill. I don't buy it. In reality though, the insane pricing of this Modern Warfare level pack will be forgotten about in a couple of weeks. And that's sort of the problem with slowly rising costs of DLC. You only really notice it when you step back and look over a long period of time. So if you're sick of spending far too much on downloadable content, vote with your pockets. Just don't buy into it. Unless of course you're talking about the Spanish commentary pack for FIFA 10. Bon